Hello, Anita here. Today I'm going to answer another one of my most asked questions and that is how I join my squares. Now, I don't always use this technique but this is one of my favourite ways to join squares because it's really neat, it gives lovely edges and there is no sewing together. I am not a fan of sewing so this is one of my preferred techniques and it's called join as you go. Now, if you want to know how I make my granny squares, I've got a video of how I make them and it's linked in the description box below. And it's a special technique which means that you will only have one tail to sew in, no matter how many rounds you do. So it's a really useful way to avoid sewing in those pesky tails. Um, I'll also be talking a little bit about the pattern itself. So I've designed the pattern uh, with the Crochet Studio app and we'll have a look at that as well and today I'm using Sirdar Country Classic the shades I'm using will be listed below and I'm using a 4mm hook some scissors for snipping and a yarn needle okay let's get going I absolutely love the look of random granny square blankets but I find it really really hard to be random and I know that lots of you do too so I'm going to just talk you through how you can make granny square patterns really quickly and easily with just a few taps using the Crochet Studio app so I'm going to open the app on my phone I'm going to toolbox and select granny squares and I'm just going to choose one of the palettes that I've pre-made and saved on my, on my app. So this is the one that I'm using for this blanket. And then I'm going to go to blanket settings and give the app some information about what I want to make. So the pattern I made is 10 squares by 10 squares and each square has five rounds. So I'm just going to use the sliders to give it that information and it's giving me an estimate that my finished blanket size will be 120 centimeters by 120 centimeters I'm going to save changes and it's given me a blank of my 10 by 10 blanket and what I can do now is either drag and drop colors onto it so if you've got a sp specific arrangement of colors that you want to use you can drag colours anywhere onto the blanket and you can zoom in and add more however you want and you will see that it's giving a real-time estimate of how much yarn is required for each of those rounds or you can click randomize make some magic and it will do all of that for you and the app is doing its very best to make sure that colours don't touch and it's using an even amount of each yarn so you can keep clicking make some magic and it will give you a unique pattern every time completely different and when you're happy so I like that one I am going to tap generate pattern and now I can add some other information and change some details. So if I go to advanced settings, I can toggle on printer friendly and that will just give me a reduced pattern file that's easy to print. I can add a designer name, so it's got my designer name in here and you can change that to yours. You can choose UK or US crochet terminology and you can change the measurement system from metric to imperial whatever suits you best and you also have a list here of the yarns that you would need to make that blanket so i'm just going to tap generate pdf and while that's doing that i'll just show you what you get you get um, a pattern file that has um, a list of all the yarns that you need it has written crochet instructions to make the squares and it also gives you a square by square breakdown 
so that you know which colours to use, you know what you're making, you don't have to worry about what's coming next. You can tick off at the end when you're done and it also gives you a layout to tell you where to position the square in your blanket. This is just one of the many features of the app. It's free to download, so the best way to find out what it can do is to try it for yourself. Search Crochet Studio on the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. So here's my first square, and in my blanket this would be the bottom left-hand corner. Um, I'm going to show you now how to join squares onto these edges and I've got my next square here and I've started working the fifth round and I'm going to keep going till I get to the corner so I'm just working my granny round in the usual way so I've reached the corner now and I'm going to do my first three trebles and now it's time to join so in the corners we have two chains but I'm going to replace one of the chains with a slip stitch into this corner so I'm going to make one chain and now I'm going to join the two together I'm going to do that by putting my hook from top to bottom in the corner space and then just pulling up the yarn from underneath and slip stitching. So now my two squares are joined together and I've got my one chain and my in place of my second chain I've got a slip stitch. So now I'm going to finish the corner so that's just three treble crochet into the corner space in the usual way. So that's my corner. And now I need to join to this square again. So I'm going to put my hook into the space, pull up a loop and slip stitch. Now if I just pop that down, I'll take the hook out so it's easier to see, you can see that the two sets of three trebles are laying next to one another and the two squares are joined together. So I'm just going to carry on along that edge so we move into the next space. So three treble crochet. And then we're going to join again. So hook from top to bottom, pull up a loop, pull through to slip stitch, and I'm going to repeat till I get to the corner. So slip stitch and I'm at the corner now so I'm going to work my corner so my first three treble crochet one two three And then to replace the two chains that we have in the corner space, this time I'm going to slip stitch first. So I'm going to slip stitch into the corner space. Then I'm going to chain. So it's the opposite way round to how I started. And now I'm going to finish my corner.
and then you will work round the rest of the square in the usual way just to complete your granny square but if I lay that down now you can see that the two squares are neatly joined here's what it looks like on the back it just gives a really nice tidy finish I'm just going to finish this now and then I'm going to show you how to join squares here and in here when you need to join on two sides. So here are my first two squares joined. Um, you can keep joining as many squares as you want above in exactly the same way. So if you were making a scarf for instance you could just keep going um, adding one on top of the other. I'm going to add a square to this side now. This is exactly the same way um, as we added this square, so I'll just do a really quick recap. So I've got my next square and I'm at the corner, so I'm going to do my first chain of my two corner chains and then I'm going to replace the second chain with a slip stitch into this corner space. So I'm not attaching this square to this one at all. I'm just going to slip stitch into this corner space here and then I'm going to join in exactly the same way as I joined the first square. So that's my three treble crochets for the corner and then slip stitch into the next space and then continue exactly as you did before. So I've got my three squares joined uh, but my next square I have to join on two sides this time and here's one I prepared earlier but I've just realised that the colours are virtually the same and it looks silly. So I'm going to take that one away and I'm going to bring in this piece and I'm going to join this square in here. And this technique basically allows you to keep adding squares above, keep adding squares to the side and then keep adding squares that have two edges to join and you can keep joining as many squares as you like. Um, you can make blankets, bags, cardigans, scarves, anything you like, uh, just depends on the arrangement of the squares. So let's fill in this corner. I've got my square for here and I'm up to the corner of round five here. So I'm going to start as we did before, so I'm going to chain one and I'm going to slip stitch into the corner and then I'm going to work this side as if I was joining just one side as I did in the other squares. This is my last set of trebles before the corner. So the corner is slightly different this time. I'm going to do my first three trebles into the corner space.
and this time I'm going to replace both chains with slip stitches so I'm going to make one slip stitch into this corner here into this corner space here and I'm going to make my other slip stitch into this corner space here no slip stitches into this square you don't need to join to that one so my first slip stitch is going here so that replaces my first chain and my second slip stitch is going in here and that replaces my second chain and now we just finish the corner and then carry on exactly as before. So I've got a slip stitch into this space and then carry on along the side. So I'll pop this slip stitch in so I'm just going to take my hook out just to show you this corner a little bit more clearly. So we've got a slip stitch here into this corner, into the burgundy square, replacing the first chain. And then a second slip stitch here into the pink square, replacing the second chain. And this gives a nice neat corner and just pulls everything together. So if I just show you this join a little more closely now, if I just pull this apart, you can see that the slip stitches are joining into the spaces, but the treble clusters aren't joined. And this just gives you a nice, neat and secure join with no sewing. So if I just turn this round now, just so we can see the whole piece. Um, so you can see how it's constructed now. I started at the bottom left hand corner and then adding squares above, as many as you want above, adding squares to the right, as many squares as you want to the right, and then anywhere where two squares make a right angle and you need to fill in, then you've got two edges to join. So really there's only two different joins that you need that's a join on a single edge these are both the same or a join on two edges